are we going to have a war with Iran? Israel just wants that war so much. Uh, and uh, the Israel lobby is very powerful. Uh, so we could. Uh, but I've never seen such recklessness as the this Israeli government. Uh, reckless, extremist, provocative, uh, assassinating uh, uh counterparts uh, left and right, and of course, in the most provocative ways, uh, assassinating uh, the Hamas political negotiator in Tehran on the occasion of the inauguration of uh, the new Iranian president. <laughs> you know, this is aiming for pulling the U.S. into a broader war. Wait, One can, I, can, I, can I ask you stop there? So I said, are we going to have a war with Iran, and you immediately said we're being pushed by another country to yes. have a war with Iran. Is there any reason for the United States acting solely in its own interest to have a war with Iran? Of course not. And it would be devastating because Iran has allies, including Russia. So a war with Iran could easily become World War III. World War III, for everyone to understand, could easily become a nuclear war. A nuclear war you know, whatever you're going to say or do with your children or your grandchildren, say it now because the world will end uh, in a very quick moment if we fall into that. I abyss. should just pause and say you wrecked my morning over breakfast today by describing describing at length the new Annie Jacobson book on nuclear war. Which I hope you will not <laughs> describe no, I, it. I, I won't do it for everybody except that it's a remarkable book. It's chilling. Uh, I listen to it because I go for long walks. So I listen to it as an audio book with the, the author, Annie Jacobson, narrating it in a very clipped, precise way. But it uh, describes in meticulous, rigorous, technical language based on uh, voluminous research, how the world could come to an end in a few minutes. Uh, and uh, it's a very serious book. And uh, it's uh, Completely chilling. And it's called Nuclear War. Nuclear War, a scenario. By Annie Jacobson. Yeah. I just ordered it after yeah, yeah. our conversation. Though I don't want to read it, but I'm no, going to make it's... myself. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to throw that out there because it sounded important. Um, but you don't think if the United States were acting in its own interest that war with Iran would even be on the table? If the U.S. were acting in our own interest, we would not even have an argument with Russia right now. We would not have an argument with China right now. We would not have an argument with Iran right now. We'd actually be trading, having peaceful relations, uh, and by the way, not to mention saving some hundreds of billions of dollars a year so that we could fix our roads and our potholes and our broken elevators and escalators and our uh, decrepit uh, uh, passenger uh, rail travel in this country. I keep having to get off of trains that are broken down because Amtrak breaks down all the time, it seems, or maybe only when I'm riding it. <laughs> but in any event, yeah, we could actually do something for our country uh, if we were less obsessed about uh, or less drawn into these conflicts, which are all solvable on a political level without war. and But we don't want to do politics. Uh, we are the United States, or we are the Israel lobby, uh, or uh, we have a plan that goes back to 1994 to expand NATO completely contrary to what we promised the Soviet Union and Russia uh, back in uh, 1990 to 92. We cheated, we lied, but we're going to do it. So we're in a very funny way uh, in this country. Obviously, uh, major, major challenges at home of just basic living conditions and yes. infrastructure and keeping up with things. Yeah, of course, we, we, we've we, we've got some dazzling technology and some very rich people, but we've got a lot of people in this country that are not living that way. No. And uh, we're not attending to any of it because the most important thing for us is picking fights or being drawn into other people's fights. And we, Israel's trying to draw us into a broader war in the Middle East that is completely, totally, 100% against American interests. Now, I would say that uh, 
I give very little credit to this administration for anything, uh, but I would say they give signs that they don't want to be pulled into a war with Iran, and they know that Israel is trying to provoke that, and they're torn because the Israel lobby is really powerful, uh, and uh, it's clear the games that Israel is playing in provoking uh, Iran and Hezbollah and uh, Northern Lebanon, and essentially at the core, um, being unwilling to talk about any political settlement uh, that gives the Palestinian people a state and some rights as the way to end all of this conflict. And instead, what Israel wants is uh, that the U.S. Uh, you know uh, protects their most extremist positions uh, and. Um, this is, of course, not in the U.S. interest. It's not in the U.S. interest to be in a war with Russia. Why should we be in a war with Russia? Russia told us absolutely, and by Russia, I mean President Putin and before him, President Yeltsin, and I was an advisor to President Yeltsin. The Russian presidents told us absolutely clearly, we can cooperate, we can have normal relations, but don't crowd us with your military bases on our border. Something the United States leaders should understand <laughs> the exact meaning of because we set that position 201 years ago in the Monroe Doctrine. Yes. And we have repeated it basically every year since, which is don't crowd us with your military in our neighborhood. That's all. That's all the Russians said. We absolutely refused to listen to this. What did the Chinese say? Something very, very simple. The Chinese say, we are one China. You, the Western countries led by Britain in the 19th century, and then uh, with the, all of the imperial powers, including Japan, at the end of the 19th century and into the 20th century, tried to dismember us, China. You tried to pull us to pieces. You conquered territory. You invaded us many times. In fact, to my mind, the most cynical war of modern history was Britain's invasion of China in 1839 called the First Opium War, which was to force China to accept British opium in trade. You know, the Chinese knew, no, we don't want to become opium addicts. And Britain said, hell, this is free trade. It's our opium. Uh, as if, uh, you know, the, the Colombian cartel would invade us and uh, on free trade principles. Uh, so <laughs> in any event, uh, the Chinese are saying one thing, don't, don't dismantle us. Okay. We went through that. We went through 150 years of that. So Taiwan, that's part of China. You said it, United States, that's the basis of our diplomatic relations. Stop provoking. That's all. We can have perfectly normal relations, but don't play the game of trying to break us apart. But we have forces in the U.S. that seem compelled to make trouble, literally, that we must provoke, we must overthrow Russia, we must divide Russia, we must dismember China, we must not allow other countries just to get on with things. That's all the other countries are saying. When I say these things, it sounds so weird, by the way, to Americans who are reading the New York Times or reading the Washington Post or reading the Wall Street Journal, because Mr. Sachs, China's our enemy. They're doing all these terrible things. Russia, they're the imperial blah, blah, blah. Because we're fed a bunch of lines that are complete nonsense. But if you say it again and say it again and say it again, and the U.S., is, you know better than anybody, USG trying to control the narrative, trying to control what we hear, trying to control uh, what social media can say, well, the, the simplest truths become completely clouded. So the point is, you ask me, does the U.S. have an interest in war with Iran? 
Of course not. Does the U.S. have an interest in war with Russia? Of course not. Does the U.S. have an interest in war with China? God forbid is my only answer would right. be probably the end of the world. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.